To face fear is supposedly the destiny of a Jedi, or so all the new Star Wars trailers keep telling me. But I'm no lightsaber-wielding hero, I am a man on the edge of my mental health trying to save my daughter and my wife from what I can only describe as pure hell. Working alongside a version of my father from a false reality that's created by Disney knockoffs I've come a long way to succeeding. I've learned there's dangers to make believe that I never knew existed. After leaving the lifeless body of a fake version of Jennifer at my dad's house, we drove in silence for a while. Didn't exactly know what to discuss with this man, who was not even from my reality. There were many questions, but none of them seemed relevant at the moment. I just wanted to save Aubrey. Hopefully in the process. Mel and Jennifer, too. Understand that this whole pseudoscience goes well beyond my graduate school, so... So when we arrived at Frank's house on the outskirts of town, all I could find myself able to do was take short notes. Hopefully, everyone else can make sense of them if they want. Now, Frank claimed that the alternate dimensions were stemmed from the collective consciousness of people from this reality, from our Earth. He also provided me with a tablet with limited range of communications from the journey ahead. He used the example of the Lion King to prove his point. Or maybe to dumb it down for me, I'm not sure which, but I did my best to listen. The circle of life is just one clue that Disney places in their films, albeit a very strong one. Do you remember when Mufasa explains to Simba that everything is connected? This is true in between dimensions. Everything that we consider to be fake here, or part of make-believe, is, in fact, the trapped spirits of something extremely real, extremely evil. Do you know what the origins of this belief come from in stories of the African spirit world? While Disney and those who followed him discovered that every single creation of man, great and small, was not a fabrication or a fantasy. He was real, he told us. And he was explaining this as he activated the strange machine that showed a shimmering image of the alternate dimension, so close and yet still so dangerous. During the golden age of Disney, the company must have been trying to protect our world from the chaos this negative dimension could cause, but then, then they got greedy. No, anyone with eyes can see they're a monopoly now. Dad took a sip from his coffee and remarked, the infection must have managed to spread from our world to yours around the same time the House of Mouse took over those films you refer to as the Star War. We've only known the truth about the evil Imperial force seeking the, to destroy the entire universe. We never, we never could have imagined that here on this side things would be considered fake, Frank added. Only one important question really sprang to my mind. Can it be stopped? I asked. The space fortress that you saw, it seems... So house a very powerful energy force. The Ravagers have tried unsuccessfully to shut it down, but all have failed. It's uh, almost fully operational, though, and the Imperials that have taken over it will likely use it to rip a hole between the dimensions, one big enough for all life forms there to swarm your world, he explained. I shuddered at the implication. That would, that would be an invasion. Then, then we need to go. Right? We need to go right now, I said. Frank nodded and got all the gear ready, testing the stability of the portal with a few small objects. I think we're ready. I think we are ready. I think we're as ready as we'll ever be, he said. Now, I can only keep the portal open for a short time, so get in and out, Frank also reminded me. Dad passed me his gun and I looked at his pale features before asking, You weren't coming with me? I spent my entire life trying to escape that place, David. Be suicide for me to go back now. The Imperial would kill me. If they didn't, and if they didn't do it, they'd at least make me suffer for all eternity, like we trapped in whatever next film they produce, he told me. I could hear the anxiety and the panic in his voice, and I understood. This wasn't his fight. But it's not anymore. I couldn't be angry for that. So I took the weapon. I held my breath, and I stepped headlong into the unknown. It's jarring to even explain what I saw. I find myself in the dark corridors of the second Death Star, at least a very close facsimile of it. Corpses of troopers line the walls, interconnected at different points to gather a hallway of bones and bodies. Some of them seemed alive, I thought, as I stepped into the next room and saw a wide pit covered nearly the entire floor. Twisted, broken bodies of some of my favorite characters form the bottom of the hole, 
a spider web. Skywalker, Solo, Obi-Wan, Dooku, even uh, Distorted Jar Jar was there. They were all there, joined, or rather fused by some unseen force. How long had they been trapped there? Carefully, I went around the edge of the pit until I found the next corridor and I took out the tablet that Frank had given me to stay in contact. It was fuzzy and full of interference, but I could still just barely make out a few words. Go. Generator. East. I followed the shadowy path towards the next area, hoping not to be detected. Soon I came along a long chasm and found myself staring at a figure that was crawling across the wall to reach what I assumed was the generator room. It was... me. Although I... I had seen plenty of faux replicas from Disney movies. Seeing myself was... Well, it was unsettling more than any other. I found myself transfixed and watching as the other me reached the chamber, and then... And I realized it was possible he was going for the same thing I was. Maybe we could work together? Maybe I could end this nightmare as quickly as it had begun. I raced up the stairs to meet him, only to be met with my first obstacle. Two guards blocked my path and I instinctively knocked them aside, hearing them angrily scream as their skulls smashed in the stairs. At least stormtroopers aren't any better than grunts in this world either, I thought as I reached the generator. What happened next was almost unbelievable. Even the crazier fanfictions haven't seen this, I thought as I studied the scene. The other me was in a standstill with a faux Vader. His dark blood-red cape swirled about as his twin sabers swooped towards him, but he held his ground. The villain rasped, and his long tubes that provided him oxygen pushed out what looked like poisonous gas as I nervously aimed my weapon, and this was my only chance. I let out a volley of blaster fire, but the fake Vader was every bit as strong as the ones from the movies that I knew and loved. He froze the bolts mid-flight and laughed, taunting me. Do you honestly think you can stop the inevitable? Soon your world will be another conquest, he growled. And the other me leapt onto his back, trying to pull apart his oxygen tubes. I rushed towards to help. The faux Vader held both of us with unseen magic and tossed us like ragdolls. It was like I had always imagined the Force would be, but probably a hundred times worse. Scenes of the horror that ended Rogue One flashed in my mind as the mimic of Vader ignited his crimson blade. Both of you will pay for this, he cackled. No, we won't, the other me replied, tossing what looked like a hand grenade towards his face. He flinched, not expecting it, and the entire room blew apart. And then we ran for it, towards the generator. He ripped apart the vital circuitry as we passed, and I heard alarms blare across the station. It wouldn't be long until this place would explode. Outside one of the windows, I could see ships arriving to try a suicide pact and destroy this mimic Death Star. How did you get here? The replica me asked in between jogs. Too long to explain. Where's Aubrey? I asked as we turned a corner. He paused, staring at me for a long moment, and then... And then a, a cold realization hit me. Aubrey's dead in this world, isn't she? I asked. I knew the answer, but it, but it still hurt. He nodded slowly, his face a mixture of pain and grief at what I had that he had lost. How many other families were here doing the same thing, I wondered. How much had Disney taken from them? from behind us a roar came. I turned to see what looked like a hybrid of a, of a Rancor and the Incredible Hulk chasing after us. It was smashing past all the droids and troopers in its way, ready to rip us limb from limb. We need to get back to your world and, and detonate this gate, my doppelganger told us. I hesitated. I didn't want to leave without my daughter, but the, the monster was telling me at that moment that it was my only option. We zigzagged towards the portal where I had arrived and pushed through as easily as I had come. The others waited for me on the other side and looked at my duplicate anxiously. David, thank God, Dad said, hugging the other me. Somehow he knew how to distinguish us. Hurry, close the gate, I said. But it was already too late. The portal was spreading. The rancor, that Hulk thing, was almost through. I clenched my teeth and I realized our battle was not over. And there was a chance. There wasn't going to be an after credit scene for the story.
Hey there kids and happy holidays, it's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and I just wanted to tell you guys thank you for watching tonight's video. If you enjoy watching videos here on YouTube, then you should check out the Mr. Creepypasta Storytime Podcast, which is available on Spotify and on iTunes and on Google Play and everywhere like that. If you enjoy listening to Mr. Creepypasta Storytime Podcast, you'll enjoy watching it on YouTube because it's the same show. You guys are both hearing the exact same thing at the exact same time. Also, thank you guys for supporting me on Patreon or on Popbase. You guys who are the top supporters on Patreon especially, thank you so much. Like Joey Gilbert, Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Wayne Milstead, Chaminsky, Ken Lando Higuchi, Brianna Ventine Jensen, Steven Van Huss, Tristan Pelton, G Weevil 3, Diana Krauss, Asia, The Red Oak Shield Virus, Sandy Barney, Nico Kyle, Caleb Dougal, Daniel Paulson, Dante Rao, Last Blade Song, The Ginger Bros, Don Mewmeister, Eliminator86, Nubski, Finley E. Hopkins, Steampunk Center, Rafael Rodriguez, Optimistic Avocado, and Dr. Strawberry. Everyone there, as well as in the description down below, thank you guys so much. If you'd like to also follow me on Popbase, where you can get a couple of different updates here and there and play games along with me, then you can do so on your phone. It's on Android and on Apple. And if you guys are looking for something like a hot beverage, such as, say, a tea for the cold winter months, then my wife is still selling teas over at etsy.com slash shop slash ivory monocle tea, including a Mr. Creepy Pasta tea that has me on it dabbing. Don't actually, actually, if you do order that tea, request that sticker because we made it, but she didn't want me to put it on the, on the tea. She said it wasn't professional. I think it's the, whatever. Check back throughout the entirety of the holiday season for more horror stories every single day forever. Sweet dreams, kids.